Yep. This is the legendary Land Rover Defender. And in this video, I'm gonna load it to the max and take it to the top of the world on the iGauntlet World's Toughest Towing Test. I'm about to start the downhill portion of the test and I'm coming out of the tunnel as always at 50 miles an hour because that is the speed limit and that's exactly how we measure downhill performance and whenever you're towing the downhill performance is actually more important because it's safety you need to know that your truck or your SUV in this case can brake uh, you safely and also do great shifting and as always, I'm gonna be counting my brake applications. That's number one. Whenever it goes to 61 miles an hour, which is right above the speed limit, I apply the brakes to bring it back down to 50. Huge thanks to our friends at Land Rover Denver. This video test would not be possible without them. Check them out using the link below in the description and they have brand new Defenders if you want one for yourself. This is a new premium SUV with a very premium price tag. But what does this mean? Well, to me it means this SUV has to do everything well. Yes, it has to be great off-road. We have other videos to show you that. But it also has to be comfortable on-road. And in my mind, it also has to be able to tow in case you want to bring some toys with you. With a rating of 8,201 pounds, I'm gonna put it to the maximum test on the mountain. Today I'm using our heavy duty car hauler trailer. This is the Iron Ball. It's 18 feet long, it's about eight feet wide, and it's capable of hauling up to 11,000 pounds. But today I'm bringing a toy with me, which is in this case, this 1999 Mercedes ML. Total trailer weight, with everything is 7,500 pounds. And with me and the Defender, I'm pushing the payload capability and the gross combined weight of this rig. Okay, that's brake on application number seven. If I go over 10 brake applications, I'm gonna switch it to manual mode. Come on, Defender, you can do this. Down shut for me. You know you're towing, I know you know the trailer is there. 10 brake applications. Okay guys, I'm gonna shift over into sport mode and I'm gonna select, manually select third gear and see if that will hold me down this mountain. Number 11, even in manual mode. But one thing is clear, I'm not white knuckling it. The road is rough, as you can tell. I feel, it feels so solid. There's no sway whatsoever. Suspension is absorbing the bumps. I feel very confident. As always on the iGauntlet, I'm using a Gen Y heavy duty hitch. It's steel. It can handle way more weight than I'm towing today. And it's highly adjustable. Here's how the trailer hookup went. All right, I backed up using the cameras. Now I'm gonna lower the trailer tongue onto the hitch and the whole thing should self-level using the air suspension. We must have a trailer brake controller. Land Rover does not offer it from the factory. It is not an accessory, so we have to go to the aftermarket. Today, we're using this Prodigy RF. This is basically a remote control trailer brake controller because this trailer has electric brakes, electrically actuated brakes. Now this being an off-roader, the hitch itself and the seven pin and the four pin connectors are kind of tucked away, way hidden, which is good for off-roading. It's not the best for towing because you gotta get it on your knees and actually find it. This is actually very easy. It uses a regular 12 volt outlet just to power itself. This device is get actually remotely paired 
to the controller in the front of the trailer. I'm gonna set it in the middle and test it. In order to do that, I have to put it in drive and roll forward. Let's check out under the hood because I think this is a very special power plant. This is a three liter straight six, not a V6. It's turbocharged. It's also a mild hybrid. So it has a 48 volt system in it that's supposed to help just provide a little bit of extra oomph. Eight speed automatic transmission. Oh yeah, and the power output right here, 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Land Rover, um, I have to ask you a question or actually a suggestion. Um, can you build a pickup truck and put this engine in there? That would be just the ticket. Overall, the hood and the engine opening here is a little bit small. And I can see that the straight six engine is hiding underneath where the dashboard is and the firewall. Um, and there's no battery under the hood. You have terminals for positive and ground, but the battery is hiding somewhere else, not here. So in the end, manual shifting the transmission on the way down helped a lot. Was able to control the speed much better. I did three brake applications with manual shifting mode and 10 brake applications with automated mode on the transmission. There was not basically no grade shifting uh, to help me slow down. Not the best performance with the automatic mode on the downhill. Styling, of course, is very subjective. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. How do you think this new Defender looks? In my opinion, just at the high level, I think it looks like a concept vehicle that was brought to production. And I think that's really, really awesome. But it has a lot of different square shapes and round shapes all working together. Even a nod to the older days with this hood cover. I, I like it, it's just odd. This is the first edition of the Defender, which means it's nearly fully loaded. Basically has every option. I love it. Uh, the seats are super comfortable. Very nice and soft yet supportive. The controls are at hand, large steering wheel. The mirrors for this towing test are okay. Not the best mirrors for towing overall, but because the trailer is low, I can see around the trailer really well. But I gotta talk about these controls up front. This dial right here on the passenger side has three functions, not just one. First, control the temperature. Okay, that's fine. Then you push it. Then you control the heated seat or the ventilated seat if you have it. Then you push this little arrow with a little fan and then you control the fan speed on the HVAC system. This driver's side dial is even more complex. It has at least four functions. First, you can still control the temperature on the driver's side. Then you push it. You can control the heated seats, ventilated seats if you have them. Then you push this, and this now becomes your terrain response system. As you can see, I can select through all of them. And there's a configurable mode where you can select different settings. If that's not enough, there's also auto, which basically lets the Defender think for itself and tries to adjust to all different conditions. And finally, when towing, and if you're connected to the trailer correctly, you can use this knob to steer while backing up. I'm gonna start at 30 miles an hour as always. I'm gonna start the timer. Yes, timer started, trip meter reset, and I'm hammered down. All right, we're up to speed already. I gotta slow down. I mean, this engine is so powerful. 62 miles an hour is the speed limit. And let's see if I can keep it. All right, I'm in the back seat. I'm sitting behind myself. There's a ton of space. It's actually very configurable. The second row, and this is a three row SUV, can recline a little bit. I can move it uh, up quite a lot, actually. The center section folds down. This is also known as a ski pass-through, so you can put long items in here. And this is very tough material, so 
it won't be hurt if you put skis or something else in here. And if you're wearing a suit or a nice shirt, you can put it right here behind you. So it's nice and neat. All right, this tailgate opens to the side, very similar to what's available on the Jeep Wrangler. Um, and this is the third row. So you just very simply lift the seats. Uh, and it's a small quarters. Um, this is not a very huge amount of space. Let me go around and actually try to get in. Okay, I have these seats slid all the way back. And then I just climb in very gracefully. And yeah, this is mostly for kids and small people uh, because I'm sitting kind of upright. My knees are kind of high. This is not a true, like a full size SUV. Although in the pinch, you can use this third row. But there are a lot of features here as well. Let me show you. Here in the back, you have a cup holder, one for each passenger. You have little nets to store your items, maybe a magazine, maybe a tablet. You got air conditioning control. And then you have a bottle holder in here. And of course, any Defender has to have these kind of skylights. Seems like the cruise control system is just keeping it at about 57, 58, 59. I need it to stay at 60 because a perfect run, this is an eight mile climb, 7% grade, and a perfect time would be eight minutes. It's still just about under 4,000 RPM. It's just relaxed. Here it is, I'm coming to the end of it. Eight minutes is a perfect run. I'm gonna stop the timer now. 757, 3.8 mpg according to the trip meter. Uh, kind of normal for an eye gauntlet run. Uh, when you're using basically almost full throttle for eight minutes straight, um, 3.8 is typical for a gas, uh, especially a turbocharged engine. So uphill performance is beautiful. Comfortable ride, suspension is great, power is awesome. I think I could put another thousand pounds or more if I could legally, of course. And this thing would still tow like a beast. For me, it's really hard to nail down the exact competitor to the Defender, especially this first edition at 74,000 bucks. But it will compete against the fully loaded Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, especially a diesel powered one. It will compete against the Mercedes Benz G Class or G Wagon at the higher end on price. And of course, there's also the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Um, and in fact, an upcoming Bronco, of course. But None of those can tow as much as this. And the reason why the rating is 8,201 pounds, it's because it's converted from kilograms. It's basically 3.7 ton of towing capacity from Europe, and that's how it translates to United States numbers in pounds. Um, that's higher than the G-Class, it's higher than the 4Runner at 5,000 pounds. It's way more than the Wrangler that tows 3,500 pounds. Here's the I Gauntlet score. On the way down, maximum number of points is 25. The Defender gets 12, minus 13 points for the brake applications. It's not the worst performance I've ever seen, but it was not good. And I would recommend, like I said, using manual shift mode on the transmission to help you descend that mountain. On the way up, it's a whole different story. A perfect run, 25 points for the speed up the mountain, eight minutes or just under eight minutes, lots of power, wonderful. 3.8 mpg means the Defender lost 11 points for fuel efficiency because the benchmark is 6 mpg. And finally, it's my subjective score. And we judge usually on the eye gauntlet. We talk about suspension, suspension squat, interior technology, and mirrors. There is no squat because the air suspension, it's perfect. Handling was amazing. I was very surprised how stable the Defender is with maximum load. Interior is wonderful. Comfortable seats, great visibility. Mirrors are not great. They're decent for today, but not towing mirrors, so I'm gonna take a one point off there. And finally, technology is really super great, except 
there's no built-in brake controller and there's no tow haul mode on the transmission. So I had to take off three points there. When you add all of that together, the final score is 72 points out of 100, which is actually pretty good, better than some other SUVs we've tested. And guys, go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real world Ike Gauntlet towing reviews.